Today we're going to talk about antineoplastic agents and with that, that mainly encompasses our chemotherapy drugs, but we may include at the end the adjuvant therapy um, medications that we also give with the chemotherapy. Cancer is actually a group of diseases in which abnormal cells grow out of control and they can even spread to other areas of the body. We actually use chemotherapy as a chemical to kill cancer cells, generally most effective in destroying cells that are actually rapidly dividing. However, we find that some chemotherapy drugs actually kill cancer cells plus the normal cells. Our role as a nurse will be to administer the chemotherapy, know and understand the contraindications, the interactions, and the therapeutic effects, side effects, and adverse reactions. Cancer is a genetic disease. So those cancers um, with a proven genetic influence includes things like breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uh, prostate, endometrial, colon, pancreatic, and lung cancers. Um, as well as malignant melanoma. So there are cancers that are genetic and predisposition. Um, what environmental factors can you think of influence cancer development? Okay, so some of those environmental factors, of course, is tobacco or cigarette smoking, asbestosis or asbestos is another one, or exposure to chemicals that are carcinogenic, such as chemo drugs that treat one cancer but can actually predispose an individual to another cancer. Um, how about inf uh, infective agents? What kind of infective agents can you think of can lead to cancer? All right, well, let's start with genital herpes. Um, that can be one infective. HPV, um, human, human papillomavirus, can actually lead to cancer of the cervix. And this is the push for the vaccines for the young girls now, as well as the boys, which um, it has been proven that HPV can help prevent rectal cancer um, as well. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C um, can actually lead into liver cancer. Um, so these are the bacteria associated with cancer. And with that, we usually see the Helicobacter pylori, which is in the stomach, that can actually lead into gastric cancer. So some infective agents are also a, an influence. Dietary is mainly seen, um, and this is what we push and strive for prevention, but dietary means that influence cancer. What ones can you think of? Okay, what we mainly see is animal fats low fiber diet, alcohol, um, even grilled foods with the use of charcoal um, or the smoking of meats. We've seen that. So we really encourage a diet that is more roughage and fiber such as your broccolis and cauliflowers which are your top two veggies um, for cancer prevention. Think about it, if it takes a long time before enough mutation occurs to cause cancer, which population is cancer most common, commonly found in? And that would be your older adults. Okay, this slide you can pretty much read, but environmental is lifestyles such as smoking, diet, and inactivity, as well as exposures to chemical and radiations um, is our environmental. Dietary, we can look at um, influences that are high in fat, low in fiber, highly processed foods with nitrates, and I know we've, we've all heard the common Hot dogs have high or high nitrates, and, and that's what we give our children all the time. Generally, just an unhealthy diet um, increases our risk for, for cancer. Um, with these dietary factors, combined with physical inactivity, you can actually see that the risk is even higher for the development of cancer. Chemotherapy drugs are either cell cycle specific versus cell cycle nonspecific. And it's really not going to make much sense because I'm going to show you a picture on the next page. But the cell cycle can go through the M phase, the S phase, the G phase, the blah, blah, blah. 
Um, but what I want you to understand is cell cycle specific drugs exert their effects during a specific phase of the cell cycle. So they are truly triggering a specific phase of that cell cycle and they're most effective against rapidly growing cancer cells. We also have cell cycle nonspecific drugs that actually exert their effects during any phase of the cell cycle, including the G0 phase, which is the resting phase. So let's look at the next slide, which gives you a picture or a visual to kind of understand the phases of these um, drugs, these chemo drugs. As you can see from this slide, um, if you look at the circle, there's many phases of the cell cycle from the mitosis, the gap, the synthesis, and the gap to, um, to the G0, which is the resting. As long as they're going around the circle, around the circle is cell cycle specific. And as you can see in the mitosis, you've got the vinca and alkaloid taxane group. Um, in the synthesis, you have the anti-metabolites. In the gap two, you have your um, podophyllotoxins um, and the tope word, top word. So all of these are specific during a cell cycle and most active against rapid growing cancer cells. So just remember this, cell specific most rapid growing cancer cells, and that includes your groups of alkaloids, antimetabolites, and the podophyllotoxins. Alkaloids um, usually end in stein, bind, and taxol. Antimetabolites usually end in bind. So if you get bind, and then there's 5-FU and uh, methotrexate. So think about cell cycle specific, more effective against rapid growing cancer cells. They are your Steinbind, Taxels, and 5-FU and methotrexate. Okay, so they're your cell cycle specific. Your cell cycle nonspecific is what I put in the center of the cycle. And these act to interfere with cell replication at any phase during the cycle. Okay, these are alkylating um, chemotherapy drugs. These are the hormones and the anti-tumor antibiotic cancer drugs. Um, the alkylating uh, group is actually our largest group. That includes cyclophosphamide, um, which is our most common um, chemo drug. There's other hormones. The hormones include our estrogens, anti-estrogens, and steroids. And all they do is slow the growth or inhibit the growth. Um, and then we have our anti-tumor metabolites, and these end in rubicin or mycin, okay? So as far as testing purposes, I don't think I would ever test you on just where it falls within the cell cycle, but it kind of helps you understand when we start using combination chemo drugs, whether we're using a cell cycle specific plus a cell cycle nonspecific. That way we are specifically targeting that cancer cell during a certain phase of it, Plus, we're also given a cell cycle nonspecific that helps to act on not interfere, um, to interfere with the cell replication at any phase. So it just helps educate you that there's many chemo drugs and their purpose is to attack the cancer at different phases and then also along the phases, all the phases, um, it'll help. So that it's better to do more than one chemo drug is what I'm trying to say. It takes probably more than one, maybe two, maybe three. Chemotherapy is what we call anti-cancer drugs, okay? Anti-cancer is against cancer. Um, they are not selective, which means the chemo does not select which cells to destroy, okay? It destroys both good cells and cancer cells. When you look at the normal cells that are affected, the normal cells are able to repair themselves and continue to grow, which causes the side effects to be temporary. But with cancer cells, these are less able to repair themselves because they're already damaged due to mutation, which is why the chemotherapy is actually effective. So remember, anti-cancer or chemo drugs 
destroy normal cells and good cells. The normal cells can repair themselves, but the um, cancer cells cannot. Which root is considered systemic? Okay, that would be intravenous. Intravenous is actually best for cancer that has actually spread to other parts of the body, has gone more systemically. Um, it's also beneficial for tumors in multiple sites or tumors too large to be removed through other means. But there are other routes in which we give chemotherapy. We can give it orally, IM, sub-Q, intraperitoneal, which is within the peritoneal cavity, intrathecal, which is within the cerebrospinal fluid of the spinal cord, intracavitary or intravesical within the bladder, intraarterial and topical. Sometimes we can implant them um, and let them sit there, okay? So um, there's many different routes for chemotherapy and it's always specific to which cancer it's trying to treat. In the next couple of slides, we're gonna talk about the side effects and adverse reactions. Um, there is a table in your book, I believe it's table 37-2, um, unless I haven't updated it with the new book, but there is a table talking about the um, side effects of chemotherapy. So study and be familiar with those side effects as we present, um, proceed forward.